Hey everybody, welcome back to Stronomix, S-T-R Anomics. Let's talk right? about reviews. We were just chat chatting about this right before we jumped on and you said something that uh, kind of stands out that like every review is worth like 200 bucks. Explain that. Let's unpa unpack that because you just, you've, you've had nothing to do, you know, since Florence came along outside of, you know, probably filling bottles and warming, you know, taking care of her. So you have this time to go and do this research Share this with them because I find it very interesting. Yeah, so I wanted to basically what I what I've been looking at recently is what are things that really impact revenue um, that are meaningful and and also things that are not what I would call an amenity. So, um, but for example, reviews and ratings and cancellation policies and um, being pet friendly and just just like little things like that. Um, that a lot of people make assumptions about, but there's no nothing out there online that says this can actually impact your revenue by X amount. And so one of the things that I found was the impact of ratings and reviews. So, you know, people think that the higher your rating, um, the more likely you're, you are to be booked. And that's kind of true, but not really. What, what the reality is, is that actually the more reviews you have, the number of reviews you have, the higher your revenue. And there's an actual dollar and figure amount with each of that as well. So you, essentially the data was saying for every review that you get, you get roughly, depending on the market, keep that in mind, but roughly between $150 to $200 a review in more revenue. So that's like- And that's positive yeah. review, right? No, it's just any review. review. Yeah, the wow. number of reviews. That's the crazy thing. It doesn't have, I'm sure like, and that's something too I want to look at. I want to break it down by, okay, well, you know, what if it's a five star? What if it's a four, three, two, one? But it doesn't matter. It's the number of reviews. That's what the the column or what I was essentially like, what I what it said is the number of reviews impacts how much revenue you make. Now, some people are like, well, hold on. You know, obviously if you have a new listing and it has, you know, three reviews, of course, a listing with a hundred reviews is going to make more money because it's been around longer. But what I did is I essentially normalized. I said, you know what, let's remove any listings that are less than a year old. So only show listings that have been active for at least a year. And let's look at the data collectively. And it's all, you, it's all saying you get paid essentially for getting a review from somebody. So a lot of people are going to take what you just said and, you know, start calling friends and family to book their open dates and do that type of stuff. And then, well, man, did Kenny just tell me that I shouldn't be doing Saturday to Saturday, seven day minimums and X, Y, Z market. And I would be better off doing two night minimums. No, that's not what he said. So let's, let's kind of discuss that a little bit. So, I mean, I, you know, I'm in a market that traditionally a, a lot of properties in Gulf Shores where like from Memorial day through labor day, it's Saturday to Saturday, seven days. So you're talking like 12, 13 reviews over that time period versus people that are doing two night minimums. Uh, if they sell out on two night minimums, they could triple the reviews that I could get, right? So mm -hmm. is that a strategy that you recommend to people just based on the value of those reviews or no? So I think there's obviously trade-offs here, you know? So let's make, let's do a little bit of math in our heads. So we'll keep it simple. So let's say that you are doing two night minimums and your ADR is, you know, I, I don't know, 500 100 bucks. bucks a night, 100, 100 bucks a night, 100 bucks a night. Whereas if you're doing a seven night minimum, you're probably getting a little bit more ADR, maybe say like 150 overall. So uh, at the end of the day, what's, oh boy, I made this more complicated in my head. Let's so. say $200. $200. <laughs> All right, 200 So you're making twice as much. So twice as much, same seven day period. With the reviews, you're getting about, we'll say 50 bucks in this particular market, 50 bucks per review that you get, assuming that you actually get the review. That's another thing too. It's not just, oh, I had people stay, you know, in the shorter amount. I actually have to get the review. So a lot of people are lucky to maybe get 30 to 40% of their guests to leave a review. Um, you know, I'm seeing a lot of people typically in a, around the range of like 20% of their guests leave a review. Depends on the property, obviously, but in um, the size. Uh, so 
I mean, in reality, you just gave up all this ADR, you know, all these like, you know, this nightly rate simply to try to get more reviews to get that extra 50 bucks, you know, and only 30% of your guests are going to get that. So if you're doing the math there, it really doesn't add up to, to change your minimum night stay. Also, the wear and tear, I think, is really important to know, too. The takeaway here is don't don't change your minimum night stay. Don't like drastically change your, you know, your price, all, all these things to, to accommodate this data to, to make it work for you. I think what the takeaway here is getting your guests to leave reviews. The easiest thing that people can do without changing prices and, and their listing and editing all these different things is to get their guests to leave reviews, incentivize your guests to leave reviews or put it in your messaging. How many people are, are starting, you know, one of the things you taught me early on is from the get go mentioning, you know, when they book, confirming the booking and saying, hey, you know, we we strive to give you a five star stay. Like, just keep mentioning that, you know, uh, even the Wi-Fi password is like five star stay, you know, and there's just things we like, love five star yeah, reviews, we love five is star our Wi-Fi reviews. every one of our property. Every single one of our messages has something about, you know we're trying to give you a five-star experience or blah, 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 you know, if you enjoy this. And then we finally ask for it at the end of it. Um, you know, and, and we we're able to probably get about 30 to 40% of our guests to leave reviews, which is good. But, uh, you know, I, I could probably try a little bit harder. There's some extra things I could do to try to incentivize. So and, that's, that's, that's the take, I don't mean to interrupt you. That's the takeaway that, that I get out of this one. So I want to be very clear for everybody. Don't lower your minimums to try to get more reviews. Um, you know, Kenny said a review is worth 200 bucks for larger properties could be worth $50 for smaller ADR properties. The math doesn't make sense just to recap what he just said. Uh, but the takeaway I get is yes, we need to be focusing on acquiring more reviews. And there's some tactics that we can put into place to do that. Uh, that you've already outlined. And I think there's a few more as well. Yeah, absolutely. What what, what else do you think? Um, I think that the mentality for the most, for, the mentality for most hosts is they think about it once the guest is checked out and that's way too late. So as you said, I start in the welcome message, the the mentioning of we strive for five-star reviews. I, I, I talk a lot about in the marketing side and the relationship building, it's about stacking, right? Mm -hmm. And the more that you can stack, and in this case, it's really that for me, for me, a lot of it's personal. You know, I try to make friends with as many, I want, I want that my guests to feel like they're friends with me as the host. Right. And a lot of people don't take on that mentality. That's why I do the video, you know, like I show people at the conference and I personalize everything and a lot of just the simple things of. I introduce, even in co-hosted properties, it's our family property. Mm -hmm. And I introduce my wife, who's a co-host with me on most of the properties. I introduce my two daughters. And I, and I sign off a lot of our messages as the faith family. That is a huge part to put that reciprocity on their family when they come back to leave a review, when they know we've got kids involved, when they know this is a family-owned property as a po one. They take better care of it. Two, it creates that relationship. I can have a connection with parents and that are bringing kids on to vacation rentals. Um, and three, I'm laying that seed all the way through in almost every single message. But it really comes in on the checkout message, Kenny, the day before checkout at 8 a.m. is when we send our checkout message. We, I used to send it at 5 p.m. But then I just kept getting messages. Hey, I haven't received a checkout message. Do we have to clean mm. today? Do we have to do those things? So I think about psychologically, I don't want them to stress out about that. So we moved it to 8 a.m. Uh, Eastern time across the board, even in Montana, which is two hours behind that, to where they're getting it like between 6 to 8 a.m. in the morning. Because the messaging is, I want you to relax. I want you to, you know, I want you to have that five-star experience. And, and I I'm, I'm kind of have some funny lines in it too. I'm sure you've probably seen the template. But it's like, hey, we don't want you to have to strip the bed, scrub the floors, do the windows, clean out the gutters, that type of stuff. Um, really, all we ask is that you take out your trash and put your dirty dishes away. We want you to enjoy your last day. you know. And then what I've added probably in the last six to nine months is, hey, if you've already done everything, here's two or three hidden gems that only locals know about. Go do these things. If you haven't seen 
the best sunset or had the best sushi or been up to the river, the mountain or whatever it is, go do this. So you're still continuing to add value. And then I've literally the checkout message. Checkout message is automated to go out at 1030. Every one of my properties checkout time is at 10 a.m. And that's where I thank them again for staying. And I let them know that I'm going to give them a five-star review. So I say, hey, thank you for being a tremendous guest. We really appreciate you staying at our family home. Um, I'll be leaving you a five-star review when it becomes available. And I hope that we were able, our family was able to earn the same from you. Mm-hmm. Right? So I'm setting that seat. Now, why do I send that at 1030? Because every one of my cleaners is trained not to start cleaning when they walk into one of my properties. Actually, they'll put in a load of laundry first to get that started because that's the slowest component of cleaning. But then they're doing their 10 to 15 minute quality control check and texting me immediately. If there's a problem, then I can manually log into owner res or hospitable and stop that message from being sent as opposed to manually going in and resending it you know, manually to every single guest. And it doesn't happen very often Uh, But it's kind of an easy follow-up so that the QC part is absolutely critical. So I wouldn't want to send that message if somebody, if I'm not going to give them a five-star review. So that's another part of that reciprocity to where if they know, then I follow up manually. Once I leave the review, hey, Kenny, just wanted to follow up one last time. Hopefully you've made it home safely. By the way, I just left you a five-star review. Safe travels. Hopefully we'll see you again. I don't ask in that last message, but I let them know that if they haven't reviewed me first, and probably 90% of the time I'm delivering my review first, if I've got that QC confirmation from my guests, I've never tracked the numbers, Kenny, but I'll bet I get 70%, uh, maybe more on the reviews because of this process. And honestly, we all know how important reviews are, but this is the first that I'm learning of how truly valuable they are as well. So hopefully some people will take this and one, the data that you're sharing, and two, the how-to to to be able to get a higher percentage of reviews. Uh, Yeah. I Also, too, when you think about it, not just Airbnb, VRBO, but in general, if you look at any site like Amazon or Google with the reviews, like (coughs) um, products or services or restaurants or whatever it is, they typically, the ones with the most reviews are high, are weighted higher on the list. They might have, you know, you might be able to like an Amazon, you might be able to pay for, you know, Hey, bump me up or whatever. But in reality, the properties with the most reviews or the restaurants or the hotels, the airlines, whatever it may be with the most reviews are typically weighted higher, regardless of the rating, because they're getting that traffic and people are rating and talking about them. And so that pushes them higher across the board. And so an Airbnb, they're doing in their algorithm, they're calculating it not the same exact way. They've got some other, you know, things that they take into account, but the rate, the amount of reviews that you have is a significant weight to help push you up in terms of, you know, where you rank in the actual like algorithm of your SEO for your particular market. And so, A lot of times it's not even the fact that you got a five-star review from someone. It's the fact that you got the actual review that people are staying at your place and they're leaving a review and they're talking about your property. That's really what's bumping you up in the SEO. That's what the data is saying. Hey, it's not necessarily the rating that Airbnb really cares about. It's the fact that you're getting a review from the guests and that's what pushes you higher. So when we do those, you know, if some people do the ghost reviews, uh, we, you know, what is that, a ghost review? I don't even know what you're talking the about. The ghost review, yeah, yeah, where you have a, a, a friend or, or family stay, and I'm doing air quotes, stay in an open date, meaning they don't actually stay there, but they book it, um, and you <laughs> refund them for it, and uh, but not through you don't you know you don't cancel, but you do the you, they take the booking and then they write you a review. So that that's a ghost. That's what we call a ghost day. So, Full disclaimer. It violates the terms of service of both yep. Airbnb and VRBO. So be very careful how you handle that. This and we're is, not we're not telling you to do that. We're just yes. saying, hey, there this are is people a- that do do it. Yes. We know people that do it. It is a very beneficial uh, tactic for some people, you know, to to implement. 
Um, it's, it's really interesting because, you know, we've done some things within a group of people, Kenny. Um, and you know, it really starts that a lot of people try to implement those things with new listings, but they don't think about filling some, you know, with those back dates. And we talked about this when it was really slow during the winter and people would go in and get some of those ghost, uh, bookings. And it's funny that when you get, especially during the slower shoulder seasons, and we've all seen this, you get a booking and then all of a sudden you get a review and then boom, 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 boom. It's like two or three bookings. You get this spike, you know, that seems to happen. And, you know, we used to see things when I was an SEO, very similar with a Google algorithm uh, with reviews. And specifically when, you know, Google My Business was brand new and we would drive three or four, we'd implement like a podium or put in a new review tool and we'd drive reviews to them. And I never really correlated it as valuable to the Airbnb or Verbo algorithm until you mentioned this this morning. Uh, but now that's something I'm going to have to dive deep into onto the the strategies for reviews. Because even, you know, a lot of people probably don't go because most of the time we have to ask for a review on Verbo, right? And, you know, a lot of people, if you don't have it in your messaging, you're going to be missing out. So I think the message here that I'm hearing from Kenny is now is the time uh, to implement a new marketing strategy, a new relationship building strategy, if you don't have it in in place with your guests to really focus on the reviews, but don't just come out and ask for a review. You know, you've got to you've got to make this kind of leading up in the relationship building process and really leverage the reciprocity um, because the reciprocity is is a very easy way uh, to get more reviews. There's no question. Here's a here's a interesting data point question. I, so I want to ask you, which one do you think has more impact? On, now that we've had this conversation, which one do you think has more impact on revenue? Having a hundred reviews or two hundred reviews, or so to hundred versus two hundred reviews that making that jump on the same property, mm -hmm. or go moving from a, a rating of a four point eight to a four point nine. I mean, I think I know the answer and it's kind of cheating, you know, for me, but, um, I would say 99.9% .9 of the industry would say going from 4.8 to 4.9 on your star rating. Um, I know, I know for a fact, there's no question going from a hundred reviews to 200 reviews is what's going to move the needle Correct. You know, for most yeah. people, even if that's 4.75 and you're not a super host potentially. Right. Those, the review, the, the number of, it's interesting because people don't think about, you know, I don't know about you, Kenny, but if I see a five-star rating on any level, whether it's an Uber driver, whether it's, you know, an Airbnb, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go and read the reviews and see how many there are. And if there's like one or two, and I do this on Amazon a lot because I buy so much on Amazon. Right. And if they've got a super high, cause I usually sort by the, the star rating, you know, I think right. it's, is it four stars, maybe not five, four on it, whatever it is on Amazon. But then I go in and I actually read the reviews. And when I see the ones that have the bots in there, that's just all glowing reviews, I steer away from that product because I think it's a shitty product that, you know, they're propping up by all of these bot reviews that are coming in and doing it. And then when you don't see the Amazon verified, you know, reviews that are coming in. So um, I think the quality of review is is super important, at least for me, on the, the, the smaller numbers. But when I go in and I see an Airbnb listing that has 487 reviews, you know, I'll use Tad Forbes as an example. You remember Tad, I had him speak to our mastermind mm -hmm. a year and a half ago. The guy had like 385, you know, five, his first 385 guests, five star reviews, never had a four, right? That's impressive, especially for a newer host. Well, he obviously comes from an HEB background and understands hospitality, yeah. right? And you know, then I remember he posted in the Facebook group when he got like his first four star rating. So it's also interesting about I'll just use Tad's Julie's cabins, right? Because he's got four cabins. So he's getting way more reviews than somebody with a single family home. You know, if you have a compound lucky retreat that we almost stayed at in Austin for a mastermind meeting that has like 37 teepees and small, tiny homes and cabins and all this type of stuff, if they're running that into like one business account, they're going to build up reviews way faster mm -hmm. than we are. So the other part about the reviews that I'll take going back to the SEO side 
Get as many as you can on Airbnb. Get as many as you can on Verbo. But if you're taking direct bookings, you need to rotate where they're, where those are going. You want to build out like your Google My Business first, right? Or Google Travel, you know, then you can screenshot them. You can import them into owner res, put them on your direct booking site. But if you're using things like Facebook, Instagram, TripAdvisor, that type of stuff, you actually want to rotate where those are going or give the options to your guest, um, especially based on where they are booking from. So like I have quite a few properties. I use Expedia. Um, and you know, I, I want them to leave reviews on Expedia. I can always grab those and use them in social, you know, on direct booking sales pages and other websites as well. Yeah. I, it's interesting that, you know, a property with, you know, let's say 200 five-star reviews and another, the same property or <laughs> a comparable property with, you know, 204.9 star reviews they'll, they'll generally make about the same amount of revenue. If, if you just take, you know, remove all the other external variables and assume they're exactly the same. Um, it has nothing really, there's like really no greater impact to get that 10th of a higher, you know, uh, in simply the rating. It's the number of reviews that has the greater impact on revenue, which is one of the easier things to get about. It's a lot harder, especially as you start to increase the number of reviews you have to go from, that 4.8 to that 4.9 overall. It's really hard to do that. And so it's better in my mind, obviously you need to improve hospitality. And I think that naturally will increase ratings, but instead of focusing on that overall average is getting, just getting the number of reviews, like getting people to review, review you um, and providing that, you know, five-star experience. And sure, you're gonna have some people who are uneducated, you know, leave me a four star, even though, you know, they, they say stupid things like, oh, I prefer bars of soap instead of like, you know, the, the squirt soap or, well, you know, stupid things like that, where they have no idea how to really understand the review system. It's going to happen. But ultimately when it comes down to what makes you money, it's the number of reviews you're getting. So. Awesome stuff. Kenny Bedwell. Thanks for joining me today on my STRonomics podcast. Just kidding. Welcome back. Thank, thank, thanks, William. <laughs> yeah, uh, exactly. I got to get that switch back. You know, unfortunately, uh, yeah, we'll talk about that later. But hey, uh, <laughs> make sure you guys are focusing on, on your reviews and your quantity. Literally, if you have people that were a great guest or you believe had a great experience and they haven't left you a review for a month or two months or three months, don't be afraid to go back and ask them uh, to give you a review. Kenny has proven the value in it today. And, and speaking of reviews, uh, if you haven't reviewed us yet or this podcast, please leave us a review. <laughs> yes. Go to Apple, go to Spotify, go to Amazon, wherever you're listening to podcasts and give us a review. It would mean the world to Kenya. We don't ask, we don't ever ask for that. No, I don't even know terrible. how many reviews we have, but we do need reviews. We do. Uh, leave a review, screenshot it and post it in Kenny's STR data host group or post it and my build short-term rental wealth group and Kenny and I, we will come up with something cool uh, to, we'll take care of you. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. We'll see you guys on the next episode of STRnomics, everybody. Happy hosting.